Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Renew Plus. I'm Pastor Tony. Thank you for joining us again today. And we're going to get right back into our series we just started yesterday entitled Faith Life. Now, yesterday we talk, uh, or read from Scripture, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, the very end of that verse, it says that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, who are the just? Those are who we would call the saved, the believer, the Christian, those who have been born again according to the new covenant. Those are the just. How did we become just? How do we become born again or saved? We received it as a free gift by faith. In other words, faith is the initiator of our salvation. But you know what? That is not where faith starts. In fact, the one who has been saved, the one who has been justified, been declared righteous in the sight of God, forgiven of all sin, and is a Christian, a born-again believer, that person is supposed to be living by their faith. Now, I know that's a new concept to most people, even a lot of Christians, as it was for me, you know, almost 35 years ago that when I began to learn about this life of faith and the way God wanted me to live here in this present life, you know, faith is not just, uh, you know, a waiting room, so to speak. We're just waiting to get to heaven someday and then enjoy the presence of God, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, all the, the good blessings of the Lord in our life. No, we're supposed to be living by faith today and enjoying a lot of those things right now in this present life. In fact, that's a large part of our witness right there to other people. They need to see that your life is better, that your life is different, radically different than just their regular life without Jesus in it. But see, that requires a life of faith. That's why we call this faith life. We're going to learn over the next few weeks how to live this life of faith. And I can tell you, it will be an adventure for you. It will be exciting, and you'll enjoy great benefits from just learning to live and walk by faith. And again, that, that's probably new to most people's thinking right there, the fact, the reality, that I can live by this faith. That faith is not just a, uh, a concept we use on, in church on Sunday mornings, but then we kind of put that terminology and that life away, you know, once we leave the church uh, steps and then we go out into everyday life through the week. We're kind of on our own. No, we're supposed to be living a life of faith as a believer 24 hours a day seven days a week your faith can be working to do anything and everything for you it accesses all the things from the supernatural unseen kingdom of God and makes those a reality in our life today so again that the just shall live by faith and you know what that's really a choice that's a choice you have to make every day of your life you're using your faith on something or another, but faith it allows us to focus on what God said about us, what God said to us, what God has already done for us in Christ. Because faith is not just trying to get God to do something for us. Faith is responding to something that God has already done, already completed, already finished in the work of salvation in Jesus. You know, as a believer, you're already forgiven of all sins. You're already blessed. You've already been delivered from the power of the kingdom of darkness. And you've already been transferred into the kingdom of God's dear son. You've already been redeemed from the curse of the law. And I use all those terminologies correctly because that's what the New Covenant tells us. These are all past tense terminologies. These are all realities in the realm of the Spirit. But by faith, we have to begin to act like those are so. We have to look into the spiritual mirror of God's Word and see who we really are and what we look like in the spiritual realm in Christ Jesus. And as we do that, then we begin to walk that out by faith and those things begin to manifest in our daily life. And it makes a difference. Let me tell you something. It makes a huge difference in our life. Now we'll go back over to Galatians chapter 2 once again. Galatians, the second chapter. We're going to read a verse that we actually left off with yesterday. Verse number 20, Galatians 2.20. Paul is talking, first person, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Now again, uh, Paul was not physically up on the cross with Jesus being crucified. 
But by identification in faith, Paul saw himself as being crucified on the cross with Jesus. See, everything changed in our life. See, Paul saw this. He took it personally. We need to take this personally. That Paul saw himself identified with Jesus. Everything radically changed at the cross. Everything radically changed in the crucifixion, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Now, we go into great detail on this in another Renew Plus podcast series I did. Uh, actually, it was the first one I did in the Renew Plus series entitled The Gospel of Christ. And we go into some great t- detail over about seven weeks or so about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. Again, I would encourage you to go back and listen to that at some point in time and get that down because everything that Jesus did on the cross, everything he did in the crucifixion, in his burial, in his resurrection was not for his own benefit. It was for our benefit. It was so God could radically impact and change our life and see it, it really did happen. It's already happened in the realm of the spirit. In your spirit, this is already a done deal. In, in the spiritual realm, this is already a, an accomplished fact, a, a, a finished work, a completed work. But see, in the natural realm, right where, we, right where we live, we have to access this and we have to receive these realities and begin to act on these by faith. It's a faith work. It's a faith act. Now, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There's a couple of translations I like on this one. In fact, there's a bunch, but I don't have time to read them all. But uh, just a couple I just picked out. But the Noli translation It says in part here, I have been crucified with Christ. Now it is not my old self, but Christ himself who lives in me. The distilled translation says, I consider myself as having died and now enjoying a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. See, for the most part, unless we have a renewed mind to the new covenant, to the realities of the new covenant of who we are and what we have in Christ, and they be, we take that personally by faith, we're going to continue just living life, even as a believer, even after the salvation experience, we'll just continue living life like we always have. But let me tell you something, that old man, the old sinner man, the old unworthy guy, the, the one who was disqualified under the curse could not measure up, coming short of the glory of God, Let me tell you something, that man died. He was crucified on the cross with Jesus. That was the end of him. And in Jesus, not only was the old man crucified and buried, but we were raised a new man, a new creation in Christ Jesus. And see, that's the life that we now live right now. Now notice notice what he says, the life which we now live in the flesh, we live by faith. This life that we're now living, that you and I are now living on the earth in this physical body, ought to be a life of faith. That's why it ought to be so radically changed and different. Our actions, our words, our thoughts, every, our mindset, our perspective of life ought to be completely changed. And we ought to be living out this life of faith of who we are and what we have as a new covenant, new creation being in Jesus. Boy, I tell you, that is just awesome. This is the this is the light. This is the kind of information I'm giving you that just totally changed and radically transformed my life and has ever since I got a hold of this. And obviously Paul got a hold of this as well. You can just hear the enthusiasm, the excitement, the the, the reality of faith in his voice as he's as he's writing this down. He says, the life which we now live. See, we don't have to wait to the sweet by and by to enjoy this kind of life. The life which we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. Now I want you to see there, he says, it is no longer I who live, but it's Christ 
who lives inside of me. As a born-again believer, it's not just you living in this physical earth house that we're in now. It's also Jesus. We have the Spirit of Christ on the inside of us right now. Now, how would that change you if you thought Jesus was living his, his life through you? I think it would change your perspective of life. Now, we all, you know, we don't have a problem with Jesus living the blessed life, living the overcoming life, living the victorious life, being at peace, having, having the presence of God in his life. We know that those are reality in Christ. But you know that? You know that you are also born again and, and you, are, you have been twinned with Christ. You have the same life, the same divine nature, the same righteousness the same spirit, the same anointing, the same everything in you that Jesus has in him right now. And see, but you have to walk that out and live it by faith. Now, there's a, a verse of scripture I quote a lot on these podcasts, quote a lot in our, our church because I live by this. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 says it this way, at the very end of 1 John 4, 17, it says, as Jesus is, so am I, in this world. Well, I tell you, that is that that one sentence, that one phrase right there is just so powerful and life changing. As Jesus is right now, think about how he is. He's in the presence of God. He's enjoying peace. He's enjoying the the joy of the presence of God. He's enjoying the overcoming life. There is no separation between him and his father. He's living in that unity with his father but you know what as Jesus is so are you so am I in this present world right now see this is information that the enemy doesn't want you getting this is information really that man-made religion and tradition is not going to give you but I tell you when you go into the New Testament this is what you find that we as a born-again believer have been made in the likeness and the image of Jesus himself. Like I said, we have been twinned with Christ. We have the same heavenly father that Jesus has. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 15, 16, 17, that we have been made heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. We have the spirit of Christ living on the inside of us, which cries out, Abba, Father. That means Daddy, Daddy. We, we have the same spirit of sonship and heirship as a born-again believer that Jesus himself has. And you know what? That means you're in right standing with God. There is nothing between you and your Father, nothing separating you between, uh, from your Heavenly Father, from perfect fellowship with Him from approaching him with confidence and boldness, just the way Jesus would. And see, as he is, so are we in this world. Now, look at one verse of scripture here as we close today, Philemon. Now, Philemon is only one chapter. Small little uh, one chapter uh, letter here in the, or book we couldn't say, could say in the New Testament, but it is powerful and it's got one thing that I want you to get today. One verse of scripture that is awesome. It's going to help us in our faith. But Philemon, we can say chapter 1, but it's verse number 6. He says that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. I want you to see that right there. That your faith becomes effective when you begin to acknowledge every good thing that is in you that's in Christ Jesus. Now, what does it mean to acknowledge? Well, it includes that word knowledge. It starts with knowledge. Revelation knowledge of the new covenant realities here that we're talking about. You come to that knowledge, but acknowledge means that you go beyond just having a knowledge of it. You begin to live it out. You begin to accept that as the reality in your life. You begin to think that way, talk that way, and act that way. You give it place in your life. And see, we begin to recognize and acknowledge every good thing that is in us in Christ Jesus. And that causes our faith to be effective. Our faith responds to that in Christ Jesus. Well, that's all the time I've got for today. Join us again tomorrow as we pick up from here. If you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We will see you tomorrow. <music>